Amen, amen, and amen. Grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessings and greetings be unto each and every one of you on this Sunday, May the 14th, 2023. On this, the Lord's day, amen. This is the Lord's day, the day the Lord has made, and we most certainly will rejoice and be glad in it. Today is today is the Lord's day, of course, and before anything else, uh, Sunday is the Lord's day, the day that our Lord rose from the dead. And the day that we come together in worship to celebrate our risen Savior. Also, today is Mother's Day. We wish a blessed and happy Mother's Day to each and every one of you as we thank God for mothers and their impacts on our lives and, and, and just thank God for each and every one of them. We thank God for our mothers today. And we come to do as Proverbs 31 says, give her and, and on Mother's Day, give her the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her at the gate. That's what we've come to do uh, on, on Mother's Day. We, 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 we come to the understanding that on Mother's Day, we give our mothers, our spiritual mothers, our grandmothers, all of those of the fruit of their hands. And we let their own works praise them when they get to the gate. Amen? And so we praise the Lord for that. People of God, as we gather together and worship on this, the sixth Sunday of Easter, let us always remember as we come together and worship that this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Amen and amen. The people of God, we open up this service in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Once more. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. People of God, at this time, we have the thanksgiving for baptism at this time. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us give thanks for our baptism. Blessed are you, O God, maker and ruler of all things. Your voice thundered over the waters at creation. You water the mountains and send springs into valleys to refresh and satisfy all living things. Through the waters of the flood, you carry those in the ark to safety. Through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. In the wilderness, you nourished them with water from the rock, and you brought them across the river Jordan to the promised land. By the baptism of his death and resurrection, your son Jesus has carried us to safety and freedom. The flood shall not overwhelm us and the deep shall not swallow us up. For Christ has brought us over to the land of promise. He sends us to make disciples baptizing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Pour out your Holy Spirit. Wash away sin in this cleansing water. Clothe the baptized with Christ. And claim us your daughters and sons, no longer slave and free, no longer male and female, but one with all the baptized in Christ Jesus, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen, amen, and amen, and amen. People of God, remember your baptism and your rebirth. People of God, at this time, we at this time we sang our opening hymn. Now all the vaults of heaven resound. Vault. Now the vault of heaven resounds in grace of love that still abounds. Christ that triumph, he is living. 
sang lies of angels loud and clear. Breathe deep their song of glory. Christ has triumphed. He is living. Alleluia. Alleluia. Guilty brains, therefore our heart with rapture sings. Christ has triumphed, he is living. Now still he comes to give us life, and by his presence fills our strife. Christ has triumphed. He is living. Alleluia. 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 Oh, fill us, Lord, with God's best love. Set heart and will on things above.
For in him we live and move and have our being. As even some of your own poets have said. For we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought to think that the deity is like gold or silver. Or we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone. An image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent. Because he has fixed the day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. People of God, we sang our gospel acclamation. Christ has arisen. Hallelujah.
We say thank you, Lord, today, and we just give you honor, glory, and praise to our mothers. Father, we ask that you would bless each mother, bless those for whom this time is hard. We ask that you would bless now this time as we hear your word, remove every distraction, every hindrance. And we pray that when it is all said and done, we may be edified, the devil may be horrified, but most of all, you be glorified. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen, amen. People of God, grace and peace be unto you from God our Father, from the Lord Jesus Christ. People of God, this is the sixth Sunday of Easter. Amen. Not a bad, this thing the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the sixth Sunday of Easter. Uh, Pentecost is in two weeks. Pentecost is in two weeks. Uh, Ascension is next week, and Pentecost is in two weeks on the 28th. So as we get closer to Pentecost, um, and, and we've been counting down to this time of the 50th day of Easter, which is on Pentecost, which is in two weeks. We thank God on this, the sixth Sunday of Easter, and we praise God for the understanding. We thank God for this Mother's Day, this Mother's Day, where we can celebrate the contributions of mothers, celebrate the work of mothers, celebrate the little mother figure, and celebrate all of those who have, uh, all of those mothers and women in general. We have stood there, and we praise the Lord for that. Now, people of God, we understand on today, uh, in our gospel text, we hear from Jesus. Jesus says to his disciples, while they're sitting at the Last Supper, he says to them, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Jesus says these words, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Uh, John 14, verse 15. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Jesus is sitting at the Last Supper with his disciples, and he says these words, letting them know that as he's about to go to the cross, as he's about to leave them momentarily, but he will come back. He'll be, we'll be right back. Amen. He would, he would come right on back. Uh, he would rise from the dead. But as he left them momentarily, he wanted to let them know that they needed to keep his commandments, to keep walking the way that he taught them to, to keep doing the things that he uh, that he told them to do, and to keep walking in the way that he wanted them to walk. Jesus invited them to do so by saying, if you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, do what I tell you. And people of God, that's exactly what Jesus says to them. It's encouraging to know that even though Jesus knows that they probably still do not know what is happening, they still don't know that Jesus is about to die, about to be arrested in a couple of hours. All they know is that they're sitting at this table. Jesus has called them to have a Last Supper meal, and he's sounding kind of sad to them. Uh, and, but all of a sudden, and, 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 and he says, if you love me, keep my commandments. In other words, if you really genuinely, if you really genuinely trust in the Lord, if you really genuinely believe in who the Lord is, you will trust his commandments. But if you don't believe him, if you don't love him, if you don't believe that he is God, you will not trust him. You will not trust what he said. So Jesus says, even as I go momentarily, and even when even, even when I ascend into heaven, it's important that you know that you need to keep my commandments if you love me. People of God, we are challenged to do that same thing. If you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, keep my commandments. Now, you know why? You know why we can love the Lord? Because he first loved us. The Bible says we loved him because he first we love him because he first loved us. That's why we love the Lord, because he first loved us. He loved us so much that he died for us. No greater love. And I know I say that scripture a lot, but it's true. What greater love have man than this, than a man laid down his life for his friend? There is no greater love than the love of Christ. And that's why we reciprocate. That's why we love him, because he first loved us. How can we love a God that loves us like that? There is no possible way that I can that I can't love somebody that loves me just like that. There's no way that I can't serve somebody that loves me like that. There's no way that I can't obey somebody that loves me like that. There is no way I can do that. So if you love me, do what I tell you. If you love me, do what I tell you. And then and, and, and if you love me, do what I tell you. Do what I tell you. And then he then he says in verse 21, uh, John 14, verse 21. He that has my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father. And I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Jesus, Jesus is saying that you keep my commandments and you keep them. You love me. 
if you now, I'm not saying that you're perfect, but if you make it a goal and an aim to please God, he says you love me. That's how I know you really love me. That's how I know you're really serious about this, that you make it your goal, your aim to please God. You make it your goal and aim to please God. Every day you start your day out say, Lord, Lord, everything that I do, everything that I say, let it please you. That, that, that's what that's how we know that you really love him. That's how we know that you really that you really not just talk because he can see it behind all the uh, he can see behind all the uh, all, all the coverings that we put over ourselves. All these all these so-called coverings that we don't want other people to see. He can see all beyond that. He knows your heart, he knows everything about you. You can hide that from man, but you can't hide it from him. He says, I know that you love me. If you do what I tell you. I know that you love me. And Jesus says. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father. In other words, talk doesn't matter to me. Isn't that what Jesus said about the religious leaders? These people say things with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Jesus says, if you obey me, if you do what I tell you to do, if you if you do what I tell you to do, I know you love me. You don't, you don't have to say that in front of people, well, this, this, and that, that, and then you do whatever you want. No, 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 no. What he said, I know that you love me if you walk with me, if you pray, if you read the Bible, your Bible, if you're not just reading, but you adhere to it. And you're not just be listeners, but you just but you be doers of the word. That's how I know that you love me, people of God. He says, and he that loveth me shall be loved by my father. And I will love him and will manifest myself to him. In other words, if you if, if you obey God, it'll always work out. He says, if you do my commandments, I'll manifest myself to you. If you obey me, I'll show up for you. If you obey me, I'll make a way of escape. If you obey me, I'll open doors that no man can shut. O -o Obedience is better than sacrifice. When you obey God, it'll always take you in the right direction. When you trust God, it'll always take you in the right direction. And we've been studying when you look at Abraham. When you look at Abraham, he trusted God, and he became the father of many nations. When you look at David, he trusted God and became king over Israel. When you look at Esther, Esther was an orphan. She trusted God, and she became the queen and saved her nation. Look, just look, just look at it, uh, and, and just think about how these people trusted God, and God turned that situation around. Look at Ruth. Ruth trusted God. Look, 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 look there at Ruth. Ruth trusted God, and, and, and look what God did. So it's even there. God, the, the Lord is saying, the Lord is saying, the, the, the Lord is saying, if you trust me, I'll make a way. That's just the way the Lord, that's just the way the Lord works. And when you trust him, he always comes through. When you believe him, he always comes through. The man that was the man that was born, the, the man that was born blind, by Bartimaeus, calling Jesus, calling, Lord, help me, Lord, help me, Lord, help me. And the Lord came through for him. The Lord, he obeyed, he, he, he did what the Lord told him to do. He called on the Lord, and the Lord came through for him. When you obey the Lord and you follow his precepts, it'll always work out. That's what he told Israel repeatedly. If you do what I tell you, it'll always work out. But once you drop me and pick up other gods and other and other uh, uh, and, and other certain things, psychology is a thing of that theology, a thing of that nature. Once you drop me, you'll lose it all. Always follow his commandments. It's on this Mother's Day. When we think about mothers and how they love us and how they care for us. If you have a mother, have a mother that loves you, a mother that cares for you, a mother who has uh, a mother who has stood by, a mother that is a mother that has, that, uh, has uh, cared for you and all of that. They love you. They love you, and and, and, and they love you, and of course you love them back because because what? Why do you love that mother back? Because she's cared for you. She's loving not just because she's your mother. Not just because she's your mother, but there's something about that love that builds up. Because if, if your mother took care of you, if your mother did what she's supposed to do to be a mother, if she did that, then that love will that, that love will just come up. But if, if if not, you'll find yourself respecting her, but not really a deep love for her. So what it is, if your mother has done certain things, and if, 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 if not just done certain things, but her, your mother has taken care of you, might not have had everything, but your mother tried and did her best, and you realize that, and you realize that that brings some kind of love that you have for her because of the love that she has for you. Sometimes she didn't eat, you ate. Sometimes a certain things of that nature. And just with any parent, just the way that they've nurtured and taken care of the take taking care of and taking care of you. That love that they have shown, it, it makes you love them. And so we praise the Lord for that. And we thank God for the love of the Lord. Same thing with Jesus. He's loved us. And our love should go back unto him. So we praise the Lord for that. We thank the Lord for that. We give God praise for that. The love that, that that's greater than any kind of love you can find on this earth, the love of Jesus. Amen.
Amen and amen. People of God, let's sing that. Let's sing that. Uh, let's let's sing. Uh, love lifted me. I, I picked another hymn, but I feel love lifted me on my spirit. I picked another hymn, uh, but we're going to do love lifted me. There's no that. Uh, what does the love lifted me? Have to do? He ascended into heaven 
and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophet. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. This is our faith as believers. This time, let us let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we thank you on today for your goodness, your loving kindness, your mercy, your presence in our lives. This is your presence is a gift. And we say thank you today. We say thank you for your patience with us. Your long suffering, your guidance, your protection, your healing power, your deliverance, your everything that you've done for us, we say thank you. And we had 10,000 tongues, it would not be enough to give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. Father, we say thank you on today, and because we know you to be this kind of a God, this kind of a God that has slipped by us, that has protected us, that has, uh, that has shielded us, that has given us grace, that has given us peace because we need to be this kind of a god we bring our concerns our doubts our worries and our fears to you for your word says cast all our cares on the lord for he careth for you so we say thank you and we cast our cares to you and in the hebrew and uh, in, in the greek i'm sorry that means and in the greek that means that we throw them so father we throw our concerns at your feet we throw our concerns our worries our doubts our fears we take them up of us and we give them to you. Father, we ask that you would be with each and every one of us. Strengthen us, guide us, comfort us, shield us in your everlasting care. We pray for those who are sick in body, mind, or spirit. Uh, Ms. Sierra Mallory, Ms. Hamilton, uh, uh, Manny Goss, uh, Ms. Alicia Giles, uh, Ms. Eileen Miller, and so many others who are dealing with certain things. We pray that you would touch them. We pray that you would lead them, that you guide them, that you strengthen them. And that you stand by each and every one of them in the name of Jesus. We pray that you would be with each and every one of us, each and every one of us that are here, uh, other than, that are here today and worship together, and those who will watch later and those who are not watching. It's everyone uh, that you would be with each and every one, comfort us and strengthen us as we go throughout this week. We thank you for bringing us through another week and let's go throughout this week. We thank you on this Mother's Day. We uh, pray that you bless all mothers, all mothers, all mother figures, and, and, and those and, and those. Uh, Mothers who have and those mothers who have blessed us and graced our lives. We pray that you would that you would uh, that you would touch them, that you guide them, that you strengthen them, and that you stand by them in the name of Jesus. We pray for those for whom this day is hard, those things who have lost uh, mothers, those who have uh, strained relationships with their mothers or something of that nature. But whatever the situation is, if this day is hard for them, that you stand by them in the name of Jesus and that you strengthen them and that you stand by God and comfort them during this time. And let them know those who are lost mothers and those who have strained relationships. That you're a mother to the motherless. And that you're able to stand in and be that kind of a God that can console them and be with them. So we praise you. We give you honor. We give you glory. We give you praise. And we ask all these things in the mighty and matchless name of Christ Jesus. And the people of the Lord said, Amen, Amen, and Amen. People of God, the peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. We share that peace virtually. Peace be with you. People of God, I give unto you some of the announcements. First of all, we uh first of all, people of God, we do uh have Bible study on Tuesday at 7 30, and then we have uh prayer on Friday at 7 30, and we have Sunday morning worship on Sunday at 10 a.m. This coming Sunday, next Sunday, next Sunday is Ascension Sunday when we celebrate the day that our Lord, the, the time that our Lord ascended into heaven. Uh, and, uh, and we so we praise the Lord for that ascension Sunday where he, uh, he ascended into heaven. And the Bible teaches us that he ascended into heaven and he is seated at the right hand of God the Father, interceding or praying for us. So we praise the Lord for that. And also two weeks from today, it's Pentecost. So we thank God for that. So we'll have service then, of course, at 10 to thank God for the birth of the church and God's outpouring of the Spirit upon his people to bring the church forth and the power of his spirit as we heard in our gospel today the lord said the lord said to his disciples i will not leave you comfortless I, or I will not leave you orphaned i will not leave you by yourself he was sending a comforter he was sending the holy spirit 
And that's what happened on Pentecost. So we praise the Lord for that. That's two weeks of today. So Tuesday at 730 we'll be here. Uh, Friday at 730 we'll be online. Uh, uh, both Tuesday and Friday at 730. And then Sunday morning at 10. Um, I do have to preach today at 12. Uh, we'll try to live stream that. I'll try, I, I have to preach today at 12. Um, and also this evening at 5. So we'll try to live stream the 12 one. And the one at 5 is there in Vineland, New Jersey. So we praise the Lord for that. And so uh, so listen your prayers as I go there. Um, and may the Lord bless and keep each and every one of you is my prayer. Praise God for his goodness. Thank God for you. And we just give God praise and glory. Amen. Amen. And amen. People of God, on this day, let us pray the prayer that our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive now the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you all his peace. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with you hence for now and forever. Amen, amen, and amen. People of God, at this time, we go forth singing our closing hymn. I love to tell the story. I don't know about you, but that's my testimony. I love to tell the story of Jesus and his glory, of Jesus and his love. Amen? At this time, let's close out with that.
to tell the story will be my name in glory to tell the old story of Jesus and his love. Go then in peace. Christ is with you. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. God bless you. Have a happy and blessed Mother's Day to all the mothers. May God keep you all in his tender care. I'll see you on Tuesday at 7.30. God bless you.